good day everyone uh, welcome to my talk on who broke the belt nobody wants to be responsible for breaking a belt but what can you as a developer do to develop it to avoid being a bad guy how can project leads especially managers want their teams to reduce the breakage of belts how many of you are managers here have you ever seen this okay so the manager would ask who has actually broken the build then the developer would say i would check because i don't know who has broken the build in my team probably someone maybe me as well so let me check and come back okay okay quick introduction about me myself ram I'm a senior software engineer at uh, R&D Bangalore, India. I'm passionate about open source. I love playing table tennis. And just a quick introduction of what our company does, so that uh, you would also get to know about us. So, JFrog, headquartered in Netanya, Israel, founded in 2008, public, Nasdaq listed, around uh, 1,100 employees. we have around 9 location and expanding we have around 7000 probably last quarter uh six products six and expanding uh, all of them are oss to hybrid model and we have we have a universal uh, jfrog platform devops platform and most importantly we contribute to the open source okay as you know software is everywhere and it runs on everywhere healthcare probably uh, social media transportation energy wherever you okay does software upgrades matter really yes say you have a tesla model and it says during the upgrade process you will not be able to drive the vehicle so it means upgrades are necessary and you co- you won't be able to drive your tesla so jfrog vision is to power all the software upgrades in the world i mean to be simple uh, i mean the word might take simple but it's huge i mean wherever you have a software it's related to an iot devices it may be related to software mobile devices or cars you mean so it's been trusted by enterprises most of the companies you see use jfrog for their software upgrades and we have a uh, developer uh, ecosystem around us we work with aws azure google and all the other partners to collaborate with them so let get let's get started with the with my talk around uh, how software development has actually evolved so as you know most of you might have followed a waterfall model and then moved into an agile model where you do a delivery probably in a weeks or a months time and then we have a devops model where it's more to do with the collaboration between different teams and the major difference that i see is instead of doing a monthly or a quarterly release we do releases every day that's the major difference when you move on to a devops model so let's get a quick agenda of my talk how development environment is actually necessary and how developers can actually leverage some of the tools to do end to end testing how many of here does end to end testing locally or somewhere right end to end test and how do you test them now uh, when you mean docker we are setting up all, uh, the instances you need with the docker okay so containers basically okay okay and we would talk about uh, a tool called cutl kubernetes test tool which is a uh, cloud native uh, cncf uh, project 
and a quick demo and a summary of the things that we discuss. Okay, so an ideal development environment. Say, I, being a new developer in a team, when I join a new team, the major task for me is to set up an environment. But most of the time, you would look up for a wiki page to do that. When I mean a wiki page, look up a documentation, copy the stuff, copy some commands, run those commands, set up the environment, which might take probably two days, at least two or one or two days to actually set up the environment. But we were looking at how can we actually be more productive in setting up an ideal development environment, something like a single click setup, and you should be able to develop and test locally, and also it should be as same as production environment. Okay, so dude, for having a ideal dev setup, we need some automation around that. So, which would mean instead of actually copying and pasting the instructions on a wiki page, you can do some automation and write some scripts so that it saves time and also a uh, few hours as well. And when you have no manual steps, which would mean error free, and also quick reload. Say, I develop a feature, I want to test it, so that I don't want to deploy it on a remote server and test it out. So I want to quickly reload my changes on my local thing, and then push the changes. As I've talked about, uh, the dev environment should be as same as the production environment. The main idea around this is reproduction of production issues locally. Say we have a bug or an issue in the production and you would like to replicate the same thing into dev environment. Most of the times that is not possible. Okay? Developers would run into a different system, they develop it on Mac and they deploy it on Unix or Linux on some operating systems where they don't, they don't have a debugging environment. Okay, so let's understand the problem currently as part of the talk. So when you do a feature development, I create a local branch, write some code around that, around that feature, and write some unit test, see if it everything works, then push or commit the changes. I, but most developers don't write end-to-end -end test. I don't do that previously and then commit the changes and put to a, push us to the Git repository. So the problem statement here is, when a developer commits some changes, pushes the code, there might be a chance that end-to-end -end test runs on a remote server. And the te these tests take probably a couple of hours, maybe a day, to see all the scenarios that are being tested. Say that a test failed due to the commit. There might be due to a bad environment as well, but let's say the end-to-end -end test failed due to our bad commit. Then the return time, the round trip to come back to the developer is huge when you have these end-to-end -end tests remotely. So how can we avoid this? Is there any way? Okay. So currently, the remote end-to-end -end tests that we talk about once the developer writes the code, writes some unit tests, say something fails, he fixes them again, then pushes the code, commits it, then on the CI remote CI CD server, he runs those tests. Say something breaks there, the round trip here is huge to get back. So is there any solution for this? So at JFrog, we were evaluating, is there any tool to actually do those end-to-end -end tests locally. We were a cloud native company, and we were evaluating some tools open source. Okay, before I introduce the tool, let me talk about how those remote end-to-end -end tests can be delivered locally as well, using local end-to-end -end tests. So with that, whenever I see some runs some end-to-end -end test locally, if something fails, locally, I would be able to commit, amend those changes, and push it. So whenever you do some changes locally, you push it, you commit it, and then run the test. 
So if the tests fail again, just amend those changes, fix, and commit it. This way reduces the round trip, so that end-to-end -end tests run completely on your local laptop. You don't need to worry about whether an end-to-end -end test environment is failing due to some environment issues or not, OK? So my suggestion over here is bring all those remote, end -to remote tests locally, OK? So the change here is, instead of doing a push, do a commit and amend those changes. OK, so let's talk about, so we were evaluating some open source tools. We found a tool called Cuttle. Cuttle is Kubernetes test tool. And let's, and what we discovered when we, when we talked to our developers locally in our, in our company, they are not running sufficient integration or end-to-end -end test. The reason is simple. They don't understand the infrastructure around how to run the end-to-end -end test, and they don't know how to reproduce the same production-like use cases in there locally. So, so when we started discovering this tool, we thought, how can we leverage developers to write end-to-end -end test on their test code itself, rather than depending on some external environment to do that. So, Kubernetes, Cuttle is a Kubernetes test tool. This is primarily a test framework to write declarative test, mainly for testing Kubernetes operators or anything to do with Kubernetes, okay? It's a YAML-based declarative tool. And by using YAML-based, say I'm a Go developer or a Java developer or a Python developer, you don't need to worry about the underlying uh, underlying language that you use, you can still use Cuttle to test your infrastructure or test your uh, changes, code changes. And this way, it creates an ability to r set up an end-to-end -end cluster very easily, okay? Okay, so to get started, how do I install Cuttle? If you are a Mac user, you can do a brew, tap, kudo builder, tap and do a brew install Cuttle CLI. If you are a Linux user, you can use a kubectl crew install Cuttle. And if you are a Go developer, and if you want to integrate this into your uh, code directly, you can still use a API integration directly. Go get a GitHub Kudo Builder Cuttle. So there are three ways to do that. You can choose whichever you need, OK? And crew is a packet manager for uh, kubectl, uh, kubectl packet manager. So Cuttle is both a CLI tool as well as an API testing tool, OK? So where would Cuttle be useful, OK? So if you are an application admin who wants to automate the creation of new Kubernetes environment, say, for example, I'm a Go developer. I want to set up an Kubernetes environment, spin up an environment, create a namespace, run my test, and destroy those things, which is a painful process if you want to write a Go code, okay? Create a namespace. Go testing is also a module that would provide that, but writing those Go code, compiling it, and running those tests is a painful process, okay? So you can use a cuttle which would actually provide creation of namespaces, creation of an environment, running those tests parallelly as well, OK? And if you want to test your application on multiple versions of Kubernetes, say, for, say for, for example, if I want to test my on test my application in 1.19 of Kubernetes, 1.27 of uh, GA version of Kubernetes, which was released pre very recently, you can still do that. You can just provide the Kubernetes version, if you are using a kind, kind as a cluster, you can just specify the version of kind that you are trying to install, OK? And Cuttle is also for developers who want to easily test Kubernetes operators. So operators are more to do with custom resource definitions and CR, CRs and CRDs. OK, so let me quickly get into the how Cuttle would look like, that the Cuttle uh, testing suit would look like. So we have three things. One is a cuttle suit. We have a test step and a test assertion. Three main things around it. 
Test suite is a configuration where you have, you define the entire project structure, how, how uh, my suite would look like. So you, so you can see here, the API version is Cuttle Dev V1 Beta 1. So it's more like a CRD, custom resource definitions, and a kind is a test suit. You can see the ki start kind. So as part of uh, Cuttle, kind is by default true. If you want to disable and use an external uh, Kubernetes cluster to test your changes, you can still do that by setting kind, start kind as false. If you don't define anything over there, it uses the local Docker desktop uh, on a Mac and install using uh, kind as a cluster, default cluster. And the namespace that I've specified is just a name, uh, sorry, name is end-to-end. -end. And the test directory, I would show you uh, at the end with the demo. And what I'm trying to do is add some commands so that I set up my environment as a prerequisite and then run some test on top of it. So this is a test suite configuration. Test suite is more like a collection of all the tests that you combine in. Next is a test step. So the test step is, uh, you can see API version is Cuttle Dev V1 Beta 1. This is also a part of the CRD, custom resource definition. And the kind is test step. Instead of a suit, this is a step, okay? And you can see, you can run any commands that you like, okay? You can write your own shell scripts that you would invoke. So if you have already have a shell script, this is more like a skeleton that you are including it and just running your test suit. Next is the test assertion step. Say for example, I've written a test. I would like to verify that it is behaving as expected. So what I would do is I would do an assertion on based on, say for example, I wanted to install an application and then do an assertion whether if it is a stateful set application, you can do a stateful set and set replicas and see the ready replicas are one, okay? Okay, so let me quickly give an example and see how the test structure would look like. So as part of the demo, I would have a folder called test under which we call it as end-to-end -end test, and then have uh, different folders. Have you ever worked ever, ever uh, worked with something called Flyway? Flyway, yes. Yes, yeah. Flyway has a similar structure where you define the database migration scripts in a sequential order, okay? Which is very similar here, where you would define the steps or the test in a sequential manner. See here. 0, 0, 0, 0, 001, you can add that. I would show it in an example. And an install and a scale. So I have two tests, which first is the install, another is a scale step, okay? And cuttle test.yaml file is the suit file that we configured. So let me quickly switch back and give a demo on what we have. You can see that my screen, right? So I have some end-to-end -end test, and I have four tests as part of the example that I have. One is the install, another is an install with an extra configuration that I would like to do, another is a scale test, and there is an upgrade test. So four tests that I would like to run parallelly. So Cuttle supports running of these tests parallelly. By default, it supports eight parallel tests, okay, that you can configure. If you don't define anything, it would expect to be a parallel one, okay? And you can also configure the reports as part of the running, to, the running those tests. So if you, want to, if you want to run these end-to-end -end tests and see a report in an XML, you can, you can probably fl pass a flag, passing it as hyphen hyphen XML or hyphen hyphen JSON. So let me quickly run a test and then show you.
So kubectl cuttle test. So what it would do is, let me show you the configuration file that we have. So this is the configuration file, suit file, where I've set the kind, uh, start kind as true, even if it is set to, even if we don't define that, it would be defined as true. And by default, it's true. And the context, I've set it as buzzwords. Uh, it's more like uh, kind context. You can ignore that. And you can see line number 12, there is a timeout. So 900 seconds is the timeout that we have. If the test doesn't complete in 900 seconds, it would fail. Okay. So let's see what it does. Before we get into that, let's show, me, show what test that we have. So I have install, install as a split, scale, and an upgrade. And an install would do just an install of an artifactory, and then do an assertion to see if replicas are one. What I would do as a split is, there is a concept of uh, split containers, services to containers in artifactory, I would show you, where I would set this flag to true, and then do an assertion. And the scale thing is, I would do an install and set the replica count as two and do an assertion whether two replicas would come up. Okay, the third test. The fourth test is an upgrade test. Where would I would first install and then do an upgrade. Okay, with a different replica count. Okay. So let's get to the console and see where we are. So you can see here, I've run kubectl cuttle test. It has created a kind cluster and running those tests. So let me export this kind cluster configuration and see this running test in a K9s. Before I do that, let me export this cube config file. Okay, K9s is a tool to view Kubernetes clusters. It's an open source. You can do a brew install uh, K9s. That would install uh, uh, K9s. It's a graphical view of uh, viewing Kubernetes clusters. So what we have done is we have ran four tests. So f each of these four tests would run in a different namespace and give us the result. So you can see four namespaces are being created. Cuttle test the harmless Thing. This one is another namespace. Let me quickly show you all the namespaces that we have. Okay. So if we have four namespaces, four tests running parallelly. Uh, it would roughly take around six minutes that I've previously done. So what it does, let, let us go into the one namespace and see how this is getting installed. So you can see it is trying to install Artifactory on the latest version is 7.59.11. And this, in the next namespace, where I've set uh, service split to containers services to true, where we have uh, all these microservices in Artifactory running with true enabled. So this is not the default configuration. So I would like to test this configuration as well. The next thing is the um, doing a install scaling up so first do an install and once this is successful the second replica count the second replica would also come up okay and the fourth namespace we are doing a upgrade test so if we would first install artifactory and then change the replica count to two okay so these are four tests that would run parallelly and we could see the logs over here as well so cuttle provides a uh, logs in such a fashion where you can see which test is actually running and what logs you can see. You can see Cuttle says harness install. This is the install test logs. Okay. And and you can see upgrade zero one test. So let, let me go back and show you. I've referred to Flyway here previously. So we have these versioning similar to, to Flyway where you can see there are two internal tests that would run in a upgrade scenario. Okay, 
these are steps I would call it and each step 00, zero install would run first then 0, 01 install would start first. Flyway follows the similar approach of doing a database migrations. Cuttle also follows a similar approach. So if you have 10 steps as part of a test, you can actually version them uh, in such a fashion. 0, 0, 001, 0, 01, 0, 02, 0, 03, 0, 02. Okay? So let us go back and see where we are on the test path. Okay? So some of the tests are running and some of the uh, are done. In the meantime, I would like to show you the, while the test run and give us a report, I would like to show you the documentation around Cuttle. Okay. So we have a uh, doc detailed documentation on Cuttle and the prerequisites. You can have a Kubernetes cluster minimum of 1.13 and a kubectl version of 1.39 and above. How can I install Cuttle? You can use uh, uh, Cuttle using brew install or uh, or whatever that I've ref referred in the previous uh, slides. And there is a CLI usage, uh, how the tests would look like, writing your first test. Uh, crew install install Cuttle is more like a Linux way of doing this. And there is an API integration as well, where you can integrate this into your uh, Go code as a library and then start writing Cuttle test inside your Go code as well. Uh, and the steps. So this is a detailed documentation where this is sponsored by CNCF, and which is under a name called Kudo Builder. Kudo was primarily focused on writing a declarative way of writing operators, Kubernetes operators. This tool is part of their testing effort in testing those operators. Okay, that was the primary reason how Cuttle, Cuttle was developed. Okay, and which is very active. This uh, this uh, release cycles happens every probably two months or three months, and we have uh, Kane, who is an active contributor, and we work with him on some, any improvements on that. So JFrog doesn't actually. Uh, work on this cuttle. We only use this tool internally to test our uh, Kubernetes operators as well as Kubernetes resources. So let's go back to the C and see where the tests are. So you can see all the namespaces got created and also being destroyed. In the sense tests have ran, we would see the results how they are now. Okay. Let's go back to the logs and see. You can see you can see here, Cuttle has run four tests. And first is an install, next is an install underscore split, third one is the scale, fourth one is an upgrade. And the four tests have passed. So with this, I would be very confident that whatever the changes that I've done in my code, along with these end-to-end -end tests, would be committed to a Git repository, would work on that environment as well, okay? That's the confidence that a developer needs when, when he writes such code. And this is a tool or a framework that provides developers with such an opportunity to uh, enhance their time and as well as their productivity. Okay. I would quickly go back to my presentation. Okay, so the references. Cuttle has a, dev, I've shown you in the Git, GitHub page as well as the documentation. And there is a dedicated Slack channel on Kubernetes, which is called Kudo. And you can uh, directly, uh, directly refer or register as a free registration. And there is a tool that I've referred as K9s that you would install as, you can refer to as GitHub link as well. So let's take the summary of this talk what we have learned. Cuttle is an open source tool, CNCF approved, and there are so many contributors actively contributing to it. It can be used for local end-to-end -end testing. When you have end-to-end -end test run, tests running locally, there, which would mean developers are quite confident, and there would be very few broken builds. Okay? Uh, 
There might be builds that are broken on an end-to-end -end environment, not due to the changes that a developer has done. Maybe due to some environment issues. But at least developer would be confident in pushing his code to a Git repository and getting reviewed and merged to a master. Okay? Which would mean release faster, and which would also mean happy developers. Okay? And happy customers as well. Any questions? Do you want to take mic? Thank you. Uh, it was very good presentation. Uh, I want to clarify. Uh, it is accessible only in Kubernetes, right? Yeah, yeah, primarily Kubernetes, but this can be used. I mean, most of the companies are actually moving towards Kubernetes and cloud native, so the focus is more on that front. Okay. Can you please repeat your question? Are, are you referring to something like, can this be used somewhere else? Or yeah, yeah. For example, in ECS, uh, in AWS, for example, is there some integrations? Uh? Yeah, you can use this tool as well there. Because we are actually not, uh, let me quickly show back to the presentation and show you. OK. See here. See here, uh, let me go back. See here, what we are doing is, we are adding the test suit steps here. If you want to add anything specific to non-Kubernetes, you can add this as a shell script or run those commands and can be used. So this can be actually used for any end-to-end -end testing frameworks, even without, I mean, primarily written for Kubernetes, but this can be used for any things. Okay, thank you. Any questions? We have been using this tool for uh, quite a long, and we were actively working with the uh, main contributor as well in, in understanding and how testing can be improved and productivity can be improved as a developer. Okay, thanks everyone.